Okay, we're going to go ahead and get started. Welcome to Les Brown's Motivational Monday Night Call. It is Monday, the 16th of December, and we are excited that you have joined Les Brown's Motivational Monday Night Call. Thank you for being here, the place for your inspiration and motivation by world-renowned speaker, coach, author, and all-around incredible, dynamic, inspiring individual in the body and the person of Mr. Les Brown. My name is Stacey N.C. Grant. I'm your host for this evening, empowerment specialist and one of Les Brown's platinum speakers. We appreciate you. We appreciate your voices. We appreciate the time you take every single Monday to tune in and to listen to the message. There's a special message that's coming tonight. If you have not already, text Email, posted, tweeted, and told a friend that Les Brown is live on the line tonight. Now is the time that you want to do that because he is about to bring us a really special and important message for us to ponder, ladies and gentlemen. We're at a crucial time in our life, in our world, and we have to pay close attention to the things that are going to bring us the kind of rewards that we're looking for. So sit back. Put on your seatbelts, get your pen and your paper out, because Mr. Brown is about to deliver. Mr. Brown, are you on the line tonight? (laughs) Yes, I am. How are you? I am excellent. Just working with our technology in the back, but we're excited that you're here. So happy to know that you are doing the work that you're doing, Les, because you're changing lives. You're inspiring each and every one of us to live our best life yet and to truly make a difference on planet Earth. Well, thank you so much, and I want to thank you for hosting the call and the good work that you and Anita have been doing for us on this call, and we are ready to go. Excellent. Well, I am turning my phone on mute and getting my pen and paper out. All right. Hello, everybody. It's a pleasure to be with you. I was in Los Angeles this past weekend. James Melanchuk had a big money speaker weekend training. It's a boot camp. And I was among those presenters. People from all over the country were there to get ideas on how they can begin to develop their speaking skills, how they can grow their speaking business. And I was the only presenter that did not offer a training. I want you to look at your life and look at your goals and look at what it is you want to do. And here's something that I want you to keep in mind. You've heard of the Midas Touch. Well, the reason I believe that the Midas touch, and you can have that too, is so special, and that means that everything that you touch turns to gold, is that you don't want to touch everything. You've got to learn to become exclusive and very limited with the people that you allow yourself to be exposed to, with the people that you allow to be in your ear, that you allow to be in your presence that you allow to begin to to drain your energy. One of the things that Stacy and St. Grant said, that this is a time you want to play, pay close attention to what's happening in your life and what's going on around you and how are things affecting you. I don't watch the news. And the reason that I don't watch the news, one day I was checking my blood pressure and I was watching the news, and I noticed that at the end of the news, my blood pressure was much higher than it was at the beginning of the news. Because if it leads, it bleeds. The worst things is going on in the world, that's what they're going to report on. And it's sensational. And then you go to sleep with that stuff on you. You wonder why you can't sleep at night, because your mind is full of a lot of trash that's frightening, that makes you paranoid, and that does not serve you, does not help you, does not enlighten you, does not bring you a sense of peace. So you got to pay close attention to what's going on around you, what's happening to you. When certain people are in your presence, how do they affect your energy? There are some people that are emotional vampires. Yes, emotional vampires that they drain the life out of you. Could be a significant other, could be your children, could be so-called friends. And you gotta protect yourself from these emotional vampires because life is short and unpredictable. One phone call can change everything right now in your life. 
One car accident can change everything for you. And so one of the things that as you look at yourself and look at your life, here's something I want you to keep in mind. I want you to write this down. Don't let yourself get down with OPP, other people's problems. OPP, other people's problems. See, if you allow it, people in your life, people that are close to you, family members, friends, if you allow it, it will stress you out with their craziness and straight out stupid choices. I have a nephew who's now waiting to be transferred to a state prison in Georgia. He got in trouble breaking and entering. Now, smart academically, great athlete, went to school, went to college, got a scholarship, played bid whist to get a Ph.D. in that and to party with his friends and, and got high on, on, on smoke every night, got kicked out of school, couldn't find a job, got with the wrong crowd. He worked on the road with me for a while. His mother sent him to me, my sister, and I talked to him and said, listen, boy, you know, stay away from negative people. You are bright. You have good communication skills. You have a bright future in front of you. You know, I've been young. We all party and have a good time. But one of the things I've got to tell you, stay away from the losers in life. He didn't want to hear it. Ladies and gentlemen, I have come to learn there are some people you can't tell them anything. And a lot of these young people, too. Why? Because they know everything. Now, they know everything, yet their lives are all jacked up. So guess what he did? Hung up with some people. They broke in some folks' houses and stole their stuff. They got arrested, and he was among them. Went to court. Judge let him off on probation. All right? Let him off on probation. Didn't get do any jail time. Guess what he did while on probation? Broke in somebody else's house. <laughs> Okay, stole their stuff, got arrested again. Police come up to my sister's house looking for him, get arrested again. Judge said, wait a minute, you again? You look like a clean-cut young man. You are intelligent. No, I, I can't believe this. You before me again? So he pleaded and begged. Guess what she did? Gave him another break. Guess what he did? Got arrested again. <laughs> Let me tell you something. You know, I, you know, I've said when my sister called me, are you kidding me? Let me tell you what. There are some people that just don't get it. They don't get it. And when you try and give them some good advice, they become defensive. They become argumentative. And, 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 and the best thing to do is to back off. Stop the insanity. Back off. Don't scream. Don't yell. I tried that craziness. Back off. Don't allow your blood pressure to go up and, and, and might have a stroke. Back off and pray for peace and calm in your body, in your mind, in your spirit, because at the end of the day, it's their life, not yours. And put that time, put that energy, Put that focus, put that passion and that concentration that you've been wasting on this person who doesn't want anything out of life and put that in some area of your life that you have now neglected trying to help them. You know, when you're on a plane, they, they have an announcement. In the event of an emergency, put your oxygen mask on first. I always thought about that. I said, well, what if I got a baby with me? What if my baby is with me? I thought about that. You know why they say put it on you first and not the baby? Because if the plane crashes, guess what? And you're able to survive, and you put the oxygen mask on the baby, and you die of asphyxiation, the baby can't get off the plane. Why? Because it's a baby. <laughs> It can't, it can't get off the plane. It's a baby. 
Same thing with grown people who come to you. They know everything. You can't tell them anything. But the life is always jacked up. They never have any money. They're always needing some help. The hand is always out. You don't want to help them. Why? Because, and this is why my favorite book says, He that has shall get, that he that has not, even that that he has shall be taken away. Why? Because if something happens to you, they can't help you. Why? How do you know that? Because they can't help themselves. They can't help themselves. If they can't help themselves, if they've been so irresponsible in their choices in life and their life is jacked up over and over and over again, there are certain people that are perpetually broke. There are certain people that there's a, a, a dark cloud follows around, follow them around, and something's always going on in their life. I don't even get in cars with people like that. If I see one of them getting on an elevator, I'll wait. I'll take the staircase first because there's some energy that you don't need to be around. Do you hear me? There's some energy that you don't need to be around. There's some people that you need to come out from among them. Come out. Don't, don't try and change them. It's a full-time job changing yourself. See, today, in order to make it, you have to have a spirit of optimism. In order to make it, you've got to check yourself. You've got to check your mind. You've got to see what's going on with you in every area of your life. You've got to be on top of your game. It's a new day. Things have changed, and some people don't know. They're sitting around living a scandalous life while watching scandal. They don't know what's going on. They can't afford to have an accident. They can't afford for something to be broke in the house. They can't afford it. They're one week. They're just one paycheck. They, that if something happened to them, I was a friend of mine who was telling me about scandal, and I said, look, I... I I got it. I, you know, I've seen an episode. It's, it's, it's intriguing. It's addictive. But let me ask you a question. If, if you got sick right now and you couldn't go to work, how long could you survive and maintain your same standard of living without a paycheck? And immediately she said, not long. <laughs> oh, so you have, you have an hour to give away? <laughs> Come on. See, today, this is, a, this is a time you have to look at yourself, do an assessment of your life, and make every hour count. You want your, your predominant conversation to be positive, to be profitable, to be productive, and that can make some difference in your life. This is no time for idle conversation. This is no time to allow your talents, your abilities, and skills to erode. This is a time that you have to have the, the mindset to create multiple streams of income. This is a time that you have to ask yourself the what-if question. What if I got sick? What, what if my, my, my children got ill or, or my wife or my husband? Or what if I lost my job? What would I do? What's my backup plan? Why? Because life happens. It happens. It happens. It's called life. So look at your life and, and, and be cautious and play, pay close attention and don't allow your life and yourself to get down because of OPP other people's problem. Don't let them bring it to you. Let them figure it out. It's their journey. It's the choices and the consequences they've created for their life. Give to yourself. Put your oxygen on, mask on first. And take care of yourself and the people that, that look after you and will be there for you. Because life, this thing called life, Forrest Gump had a point. Life is like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. 
And, you know, I, I wish I could interview my nephew and say, are you satisfied now? You work as hard to get in a state prison because the county jail wasn't enough because you were able to, to get special privileges because you were so charming. You fought to get in state prison like O.J. Simpson, who just couldn't be satisfied being free. He had to do something stupid and dumb so they can lock him up. I just want to ask you, are you all right now? Have you, do you have a feeling of, of fulfillment now? Is this working for you now? You obviously are in your right place because you fought so hard to get here. Your mother and I and everybody tried to talk to you, but you couldn't listen to us. You wanted to listen to your friends. Now, I, I'm just curious. I'm curious. I just want to know. But on second thought, I don't want to know. See, if, if you try and figure out why people who are crazy do crazy things, you got to be crazy. If you can figure it out, you got to be crazy. <laughs> I just, you know, there's just some things. You just, you just have to look at them, as my mother would say, and say, do Jesus. <laughs> that's, what, that's what Mamie Brown used to say. She would say, well, do Jesus. I don't know what that means. <laughs> But, you know, it's like there's, there's some situations that you just have no words for. You, you can't make sense out of it. it. There's no rhyme or reason for it. And you just have to say, well, whatever. <laughs> and keep on moving. And keep your mind focused. Don't look to the right. Don't look to the left. Keep your mind focused and keep the main thing, the main thing, and handle your business. Yeah, handle your business. Do that work that you are called to do. And as I've been thinking about it, is on the day of, as they celebrated her life and when I was flying back from South Africa, neither one of us, I'm sure, never saw this coming. This thing called life, it just doesn't seem right. I would call her tough. That's all of us did, tough. And she's gone. She's out of here. Doesn't seem right. My, my friend Boo, he's gone. He's out of here. Doesn't seem right. I mean, life, where, where, where's the time gone? I remember when I first opened for Dr. Norman Vincent Peale and the newspaper article wrote, The Grand Old Master and the young rising star, Les Brown. And now Dr. Peel is gone. Zig Ziglar is gone. Jim Rowan is gone. Charlie Tremendous Jones is gone. And now I'm the grand old master, and, and one day I'll be gone. And so what, what life does is at different points, we have to ask ourselves, how much time do I have left? Because we really don't know. But what it does do is, is allow us to check ourselves and ask ourselves the question, if I knew I had three months or six months or a year to live, would I be doing this? Would I be engaged in a conversation with this person? Would I be spending time? in this place, in this city, on this job? What is it that I long to do that I've been putting off? I've been procrastinating. It, it wakes me up in the middle of the night. It's something I feel in my heart, and I talk myself out of it. I, I, I allow myself to be distracted by life and don't allow myself to listen to that still, small voice in me that wants to express itself. We don't know how much time we have left. And, and, and that's why it's important that we should not allow other people's problems to get us down or rob us of the currency of life, which is time. 
stress us out, which cause us to get sick or fat or your hair turn gray overnight or it falls out. And why we have to be intentional to commit ourselves to be as happy and as healthy as we can possibly be, deliberately make a conscious, deliberate effort to live our life from that place of power and peace and empowerment, deliberately make a decision in spite of what we are going through at a a, a given point in time to, to control our future, to control our state of mind and our situation and not allow it to control us, to deliberately avoid the negatives and the toxic people who, who don't have any dreams, who don't have any vision of themselves in the future, who are doing just enough to get by. All they want to do is survive. I say to you that you're listening to me because survival is not who you are. I say you're listening to me because there's a part of you that wants to live, that wants to express more, that wants to travel, that wants to see the world, that wants to make a difference, that wants to live a life of meaning and purpose and impact. That's why you're listening to me. And you'll always be able to get through. Why? Because this is a conversation about life and, 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 and manifesting your greatness. But if we had Kanye West or Beyonce on the line, you couldn't get through. Why? Because we live in a world where people are driven by an entertainment-driven culture, and you have to be cautious and mindful not to get caught up and the distractions of life, not to get sucked in to the worthless, negative, empty, meaningless conversations, not to waste your time that you cannot replace doing nothing. But be mindful of where you are and whose you are and that there's a calling on your life that there's certain things that you can no longer do. Why? Because that's not you. It does not fit. When I finish this call, I've got to call a young man who's perhaps one of the most gifted speakers that I've had the honor of training. And I've got to pull his coattail. I've got to say, listen, you can change people's lives You've earned millions of dollars. You have national recognition. And you have been recognized for your gift and your talent. Don't lower yourself being like everybody else. Polluting your conversation with profanity. It's not cute. It's not edgy as some of these other speakers do. Don't follow them. Hold yourself to a higher standard. I told you, profanity is the strongest expression of a weak mind. Don't be like everybody else. No. No. Have some respect for yourself. Don't say anything on that stage that you wouldn't want your daughters to say or have some man to say to them when they're older. See, you you really have to be conscious today because you can unconsciously be mesmerized into buying into the environment where you are. All of a sudden, I mean, you know, men, when I was a kid, men didn't wear earrings. Michael Jordan triggered that. But we live in a culture that's it's copycat culture. The tattoos, copycat culture. All of us are born unique, but most people die copies. And so to hold your own, to be a thinker, 
to listen closely, as Stacy said, to pay attention to what's going on around you and to who you are and what it is that you're saying to yourself and what's in your heart and what do you really want out of this thing called life, this gift that has been given you. Who are you, really? What do you stand for? What do you represent in the world? People around the world have been celebrating the life of Nelson Mandela, a man who had such grace that boggles the imagination. A man as, as Michael Beckwith talked about in a sermon this past Sunday that while in South Africa, prison was buried in sand up to his neck in the hot burning sun. And when he said he was thirsty and wanted water, his captors, his, his gods would urinate on him. And yet and still, when he was released, rather than being angry and revengeful, when he was released, he showed a level of grace and peace and love and forgiveness that boggled the mind of his observers and his enemies. What matter of man was that? And I say that if we deliberately don't allow ourselves to be taken down by other people's problems, by the distractions of life, by this entertainment-driven culture, I say that if we make a conscious, deliberate effort to develop our gifts or to ask those reflective questions, who am I? What do I want? How do I want to show up in the world? What three things do I want said about me if I die today? What will my contribution be? What impact will I make? How is it I can make a mark? How do I claim my stake? What is the calling on my life? I say, when we take the time to turn off the text messages and the emails and the cell phone and to go in the closet and shut the door and get silent and say, speak, Lord, speak to me, speak to me. Thy servant heareth thee, and find out, who are you? What do you really want? And if we are disciplined and quiet enough, we will hear that still, small voice within that speaks, and as a result of that voice speaking, our lives will never be the same again. When we listen to that voice, that still small voice within, our real natural guide, our GPS, that is the only guide we will ever have that allows us to control our destiny and to live from a place of power and purpose and meaning and that when we do die even as Dr. King said the undertaker would cry you have something special you have greatness within you don't allow other people's problems take you off track. You are here for a reason, not just to work and pay bills and be stressed out and worried. No, no. 
you know you're here for something bigger than that. You're a conqueror. Greater is he that is in you than he that's in the world. That's my story. And I'm sticking to it. Say something. Mm. Woo! Mr. Brown, I have the fire extinguishers going. What a message tonight. You have really inspired us to make a difference. I love staying away from OPP, other people's problems, lest you can said, said it better because it's so important at this time. We can't mess around with folks who are not growing and going in the same direction. So we thank God for you, Les, for your thank voice, you. for your life, for your courage to live and do the very thing that is freeing other people and getting them to focus on the greatness inside of them. It reminded me of one of those I don't know if it's a cartoon or a Broadway play, but there was this woman in the show that would say, don't nobody bring me no bad news. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that was a play and called Bubbling Brown Sugar. That's what it is. I'm too young to remember. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Patty, yeah, Patty Joe, a friend of mine, um, played the lead role in that uh, after uh, another artist whose name escapes me right now did it, and, and we were childhood friends. That's how I remember that so well. But, yes, you don't need anybody bringing you any bad news. It, that, it, because the bad news, negative conversations are 16 times more powerful than positive conversations. It's been proven, and it stays in your mind longer that's why we have to monitor what we allow in and what the thoughts that we're focusing on, because what you think about, you bring about. That is so true, Les, and if everybody on the line listening just gets that and we're able to share it and model that behavior, can you imagine where we would be not just sitting around watching these shows and, and the entertainment-driven society, as you mentioned, but focusing on our assignment, doing the thing that we were called to do. This would be such a better world. Absolutely, yes. So I want to thank you so much, and I, I would like to have people that are on the call tonight to go to our Facebook page, brown.less, that's brown.less, that's the one with over 200,000 likes, and, and just leave us some, some messages there and, and your reaction to, to the call tonight. And also, uh, it's on my heart, I'm, I'm looking for 21 protégés who, who have a story, who have a voice, who have a commitment to do something meaningful and great with their lives. I'm looking for 21 protégés who are ready to invest in themselves and willing to work and are serious about showing up in the world in a different kind of way to email me at yes at lesbrown.com. That's Y-E-S, yes, at lesbrown.com. If you've got a story or you want to learn how to develop your voice, and my team will interview you, and, and we will determine if it's a good fit. Because one of the things, if you're in order to have the Midas touch, you don't want to touch everything or everybody. That's it. I appreciate you, my love. Thank you, Mr. Brown. I know that's right. And um, ladies and gentlemen, you heard, yes, at lesbrown.com, looking for those who know that now is the time and there is no time to waste. Mr. Brown, your message tonight was one that truly will impact and change the lives of not only the listeners but everybody else that they touch because, as you said, we have to be very careful of those that we surround ourselves with, stay away from the emotional vampires, and make sure that we play full out. We only get one time to get on the front stage of this thing called life. And, Mr. Brown, we thank you for who you are, for all you do, all that you share, and your investment in making the impactful change on all of our listeners and giving this call away as your give back to the thousands of people whose lives that you are continuing to mold and looking for those 21 you said less. That's all I want, 21. You know, my favorite number is 7, and 7 goes into 21 three times. I know that's right. Well, I'm glad I'm part of the team already. I have my number. <laughs> that's right. You got that right. 
Well, love you, Mr. Brown. Ladies and gentlemen, stay on for a few minutes longer, and we're going to tell you about how you can stay connected to Mr. Brown and the Platinum Speakers. And Les, tell them about New Year's Day, our 24 hours of motivation, that your Platinum Speakers are going to be inspiring and changing the world and telling everyone how to thrive in 2014. It is going to be a day that you can literally, and I want you to tell your family members and friends and all the positive, motivated people that you know, that you want them to be involved. You know, more people die after Christmas than any other time of the year. And, and it's because it's a time for celebration, but for a lot of people, it's a very sad and very depressing time. And so the Platinum Speakers have organized themselves to provide 24 hours of motivation where you will hear some messages from some of the top speakers on the planet from all walks of life, male and female, young and senior. It will give you methods and techniques of how to make 2014 your greatest year ever. It will begin to expand your level of awareness by listening you will discover the power that you have within yourself to change the direction of your life if it's not going in the direction of what you want right now by listening and having other people that you've partnered with to tune in it will begin to give you a vision of yourself beyond your circumstances and mental conditioning and give you the key steps on how you can unlock a great future for yourself in 2014 and beyond. By listening, it will create an experience for you that as a result of listening, even if you are going through some tough times right now, by listening, you'll be able to lift yourself out of that situation and snatch victory from the jaws of defeat and soar to new heights by listening to these very there is voices of hope because when there's hope in the future, that gives you power in the present. Mm. Ladies and gentlemen, log on now, www.24hoursofmotivation.com. 24hoursofmotivation.com. 24hoursofmotivation.com. Mr. Brown, thank you so much. We are so excited about what's yet to come and the work that we will continue to do. God bless you. We know that all of our listeners will be tuning again next week for another dose of motivation from the world-renowned speaker, coach, author, and I. You know what, Les, I'm giving you a new title. What's that? Chief, Chief of the Baddest Speakers on the Planet. I don't know what the acronym is. I'm going to come up with it, but that's who you are. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you All right, okay. People that are You're working you. out. You're working out. We're working out and get it because, truly, you are kind enough, authentic enough, and driven enough not just to leave this planet with all of your skills and talent, but you've invested in the lives of so many of us that are out here understanding your mission, supporting it, and determined to help you transform this world one person at a time. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. Take care and give everybody my regards and get some comments from them to find out how they felt about tonight's program. 